Ladies and gentlemen, a very good day to you all and a very warm welcome to Government House Yarralumla. We've managed to uh, get the rain to go away for a little while. We've had some sunshine this morning, but I'm afraid the deal we had to make was there would be wind this afternoon. But nevertheless, it's wonderful to have you all here. My name is Mark Fraser. I'm the Governor-General's official secretary. And as this badge around my neck signifies with its crossed quills, I also serve as secretary uh, to the Council for the Order of Australia. The Council, of course, recommends appointments and awards in the Order's General Division to the Governor-General, who is the Chancellor of the Order and the Principal Knight of the Order. I also serve as secretary to the Bravery Decorations Council, the body which makes recommendations to the Governor-General on Bravery Awards. I would particularly like to acknowledge among our distinguished guests here today, Senator the Honourable James McGrath, representing the Prime Minister, Air Vice Marshal Peter Yates, representing the Chief of Defence and himself Chief of Air Force, Principal Chaplain Colin Acton, representing the Chief of Navy, Brigadier Simon Johnston, representing the Chief of Army, Wing Commander Nick Hobson, representing the Council of the Order of Australia, Miss Janet Connell, representing the Commissioner of the Australian Public Service Commission. Mr Brendan Stevens, representing the Commissioner of the ACT Emergency Services. The Honourable Margaret Reid, representing the Order of Australia Association. Mr Peter White, representing the President of the Australian Bravery Association. And Mr Mark Hoskinson, the President of the Bravery Institute of Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it's a special day today, not only for recipients, but for their families, the friends here and our community. It's a day when we celebrate a diverse range of impressive achievement and service. As staff at Government House, my colleagues and I are privileged to play a small part in the recognition and celebration of that achievement. I hope we can make today an occasion that you will all remember with pride for a long time to come. Shortly, I'll invite you to stand as His Excellency the Governor-General enters the room. Please remain standing for the singing of the first verse of the Australian National Anthem. And yes, you are expected to sing. The words are on page three of your program should you need them. The investiture will then begin and proceed in the order listed in your programs. After I have read their names and citations, recipients will enter the room from the doorway on my right. And after they have been invested, they will leave the room through the centre aisle to take their seats at the back of the room. At this point, you might like to show your appreciation with some short applause as each recipient leaves the room. At the conclusion of the investiture ceremony today, the Governor-General will address us before I invite recipients to join him for a formal photograph on the state entrance steps. Could I ask the guests just remain behind for a few moments whilst that photograph occurs, and then I'll invite you all to join us for refreshments um, depending on the weather, in the dining room or spilling out onto the lakeside lawn. If you need assistance at any point today, please don't hesitate to ask a staff member. You'll recognise them by their name, name tags. As you know, CIT, the Canberra Institute of Technology, are broadcasting live. We are so lucky to have the talented young men and women of CIT uh, supporting our investiture today. Please relax and enjoy the occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the arrival of His Excellency the Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia.
Thank you. Please be seated. Your Excellency, to be presented with the insignia of his appointment as a companion in the General Division, Dr Mukesh Haikawal, for eminent service to medical governance, administration and technology, and to medicine, through leadership roles with a range of organisations, to education and the not-for-profit sector, and to the community of Western Melbourne. Dr Haikawal is a remarkable Australian who has made extraordinary contributions to medicine. Through a myriad of roles with world-leading health sector associations, he's demonstrated leadership and commitment to improving community health and wellbeing, as well as medical policy development. His dedication extends from a grassroots engagement with patients attending his practice, right through to representing our nation abroad. Dr Haikawal is a wonderful ambassador for Australia and a superb role model for young doctors. Dr Mukesh Haikawal appointed a companion of the order. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Now, Doctor, you're a remarkable person. That is obvious in the citation we've just heard, but there's other matters. Uh, you visited here in 82 and migrated in 90, is that right? Around yeah. about then. Uh, and then uh, you joined the AMA in 92, is that correct? Correct. And you rose to be uh, the president of the AMA uh, a number of years ago, the most eminent president of the association. Thank you. But in 2008, uh, just out of... Out of the blue, you, you suffered a terrible attack by some uh, assailants, picked on you for whatever reason, and you were very seriously injured in that. And uh, for months, you were uh, uh, disabled by this. You were in a coma for a while. You had to relearn to walk and talk. And here you are. It was after that some of your uh, most uh, renowned uh, recognitions uh, occurred. Um, you were made an officer of the Order of Australia in 2011? I was, sir. Yeah, well, we're very, very proud of you. We're lucky to have you. Thank you so much. Appointed a companion in the General Division, Professor Rhys Jones, for eminent service to mechanical and aerospace engineering, and to education as an academic, researcher and author, particularly in the area of aircraft structural mechanics, corrosion repair and airworthiness. Professor Jones is an accomplished engineer who is widely recognised for making pioneering advancements in defence, science and technology. His efforts have resulted in the enhanced development of the next generation of scientists in the field of aircraft structural integrity and his research will improve the safety and lifespan of aircraft globally. He's an academic who is driven to achieve real world impact and solve problems that will add value to the industries that he's served. Professor Jones's technical reputation and professional standing within the aeronautical engineering community are worthy of our nation's highest recognition. Professor Rhys Jones appointed a companion of the order. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Your Excellency, I should say. No, that's fine. Here we are. I always like to shake hands with somebody who's going to save Australian industry billions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you're doing with your groundbreaking research and recommendations in relation to uh, aviation matters. But you're doing the same sort of thing for rolling stock, aren't you? Yeah. You are, yeah. And one part of your bio that I was fascinated by, you were uh, asked to explore the reasons why the SO um, uh, refinery um, fire was so devastating in the 09 Victorian bushfires, That's weren't right. you? Yeah. Well, you've been awarded five other awards by other uh, prestigious uh, institutions and you've had uh, many peer-reviewed articles and you are a mentor to all people who uh, want to devote their brilliance to this nation. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much.
Here we go. Appointed a companion in the General Division, Professor David Kissane, for eminent service to psychiatry, particularly psycho-oncology and palliative medicine as an educator, researcher, author and clinician, and through executive roles with a range of national and international professional medical bodies. Professor Kissane is a distinguished psychiatrist who is recognised as a world authority on psychotherapy in cancer and palliative care. Through his innovative approach to new models of community care, he's added much to the understanding of mental health and end of life issues for people with cancer and also their families. He's also been generous in the training and mentoring of doctors, psychologists and researchers. Professor Kissane's commitment and his achievements in this field are of the highest order and today his nation recognises him. Professor David Kissane appointed a companion of the order. Good morning, Your Excellency. Thank you. Now, the um, whole um, life you've dedicated to psycho oncology over recent years, you've been the international, or the president of the international. Psycho Oncologist uh, Association, haven't you? Correct. Okay, and you're a fellow of the uh, Australian New Zealand uh, College. Uh, lots and lots of peer reviewed articles, I think uh, a, a, a very large number, 350 or something of that order. That's right. And so you're getting quoted all the time. Uh, you've got an association, I think, with uh, some of the most prestigious universities in the world. I mean, certainly that's at Monash and uh, Melbourne. Correct. Okay. Yes, but, but you've also got uh, with some overseas uh, institutions. Could you name one or two of those? Cornell. Cornell, yeah. Particular. Well, we've all heard of Cornell. Yeah. 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 Well, in any event, we're very proud of you and we encourage you to continue this wonderful work for the, uh, the help of people uh, with, uh, with, with cancer. cancer. Yeah. Thank you, Your Excellency. All the best. Thank you. Appointed a companion in the General Division, Professor Janet McCalman, for eminent service to education, particularly in the field of social history, as a leading academic, researcher and author, as a contributor to multidisciplinary curriculum development and through the promotion of history to the wider community. Professor McCalman is a distinguished historian and social demographer. She's made significant contributions through leading substantial interdisciplinary studies between history, health, population, indigenous people, and sociology. She's also instituted inventive crowdsourcing techniques to involve the community in her projects. Her project results have enabled investigations into how social and biological characteristics and historical circumstances affect life outcomes. Professor McCalman's commitment to Australian society is a hallmark, a hallmark of her exceptional service and we salute her. Professor Janet McCalman, appointed a companion of the order. Good morning. Good morning, thank you. Congratulations, basically. Thank you. Now, uh, you've had nine uh, high-level academic appointments within the University of Melbourne. You're uh, an op-ed columnist, or you have been. Mm -hmm. You're a prolific author. I think you've been recognised uh, multiple times by uh, Australian and overseas uh, uh, entities. Um, what's your proudest uh, publication? What's the... Oh, dear. It's probably my first, which is a bit... which is only 35 years ago. I didn't put the time <laughs> on it. You did. <laughs> <laughs> what was the... Yeah. And uh, I think uh, probably that uh, sets the bar for uh, your participation in uplifting people. You are, you, you've been, you're a medalist from the Australian Academy of Humanities, aren't you? Yes. And, and a fellow, I think. Yes, yeah. that's right. Well, Thank we're you very, very much. proud of you. Thank well you very much. Appointed a companion in the General Division. Professor Trevor McDougall, 
for eminent service to science and to education, particularly in the area of ocean thermodynamics, as an academic and researcher, to furthering the understanding of climate science and as a mentor of young scientists. Professor McDougall is an internationally acclaimed expert in the field of oceanography and the world's foremost authority on the thermodynamics of seawater and oceanic mixing processes. Across his 30-year career, he's made seminal scientific breakthroughs and his research is characterised by originality and real-world influence. He's an exceptional leader whose contributions to both science and human welfare have led to vastly improved climate models for the Southern Hemisphere. Professor McDougall's unwavering commitment to excellence in science is to be applauded at this highest level. Professor Trevor McDougall appointed a companion of the order. Good morning. Now, over 30 years uh, with CSIRO. Exactly. Uh, University of New South Wales and ANU, you've got uh, a high academic standing with them. Um, you, uh, we've heard all about your particular expertise, but uh, this has been a wonderful uh, journey for you. Uh, what's your proudest moment in the... Don't, don't say today, that's we'll <laughs> take that for granted. <laughs> The proudest moment in my career? Yeah. Oh, well, I guess being a, made a fellow of the Royal Society in London. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you've been a member of our uh, Academy of Science here uh, for quite a long time too. 20 years. 20 years, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, you are obviously a man uh, still in the absolute uh, uh, maturity of your, your standing and your, there's so much more you can give to us. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Appointed a companion in the General Division, Professor Jennifer Martin, for eminent service to science and to scientific research, particularly in the field of biochemistry and protein crystallography applied to drug-resistant bacteria, as a role model and as an advocate for gender equality in science. Professor Martin is an outstanding scientific leader. With her research activities and accomplishments, highly regarded both nationally and internationally. She publishes in prestigious life science journals and her successes in research are evident through the multiple accolades she's received. She's an advocate for gender equity in the areas of science, technology, engineering, maths and medicine, and to ensuring women are best positioned to reach their full potential. Professor Martin is an exemplar to us all. Professor Jennifer Martin appointed a companion of the order. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like to just adjust that to your hair? Underneath your hair. There we go. That's it. Lovely. Good. Now this is this joins eight other prestigious awards you've had. Uh, you had a very long uh, career also with uh, UQ. I did. Okay, yes. and uh, now you're at the, the the director of the. Uh, Institute of Drug Discovery at Griffith University? Correct. The Griffith Institute of Drug Discovery. Yes. Well, well that's wonderful. And yeah. that's something you started, I think. Yeah. Uh, you, you're also associated with any number of other of our eminent uh, scientific institutions here in Australia. You're obviously a lady with a, a very, very bright future as well as this most meritorious past. Thank you for what you do. Thank Keep you it so up. Much. Appointed a companion in the General Division, Professor Ezio Rosado, for eminent service to scientific technological research and development in the field of polymer chemistry, to its application in the biomedical, electronics and nanotechnology context as an author and through mentorship roles. Professor Rosado is a quiet achiever who has given dedicated service to this nation through his scientific endeavours. He has put Australian polymer science on the map and with his many inventions in this field around the world, he is credited with developing revolutionary chemical theories and processes that
that have resulted in new techniques for custom building plastics. Professor Rosado has been an inspiration to a generation of younger scientists and is the finest example of the best of who we are. Professor Ezio Rosado appointed a companion of the order. Good morning. Well, sometimes figures dominate. You're, you've been cited over 12,000 times in your, your research, your peer-reviewed articles, been cited over 12,000 times. There are 500 patents with your fingerprints on them. Is that correct? Right. I think one of your great outcomes is this, uh, um, the plastic solar uh, panel that obviously sounds like it's able to be produced relatively cheaply and prolifically, would that be correct? That would be correct, yes. But the other one is the delivery of precise medications to precise sites in correct. the body. Correct, oh, that's that's more that, yeah. is, yeah, that is wonderful, isn't it? Yes. Uh, well, you've been a leader of uh, so many events. Uh, you have 13 international projects where you've either been the chair or one of the leading uh, lights in that research. You, you're a truly international figure and we're very proud of you. Okay. Thank well you. done. Appointed a companion in the General Division, Professor Geoffrey Rosenfeld. For eminent service to medicine, particularly to the discipline of neurosurgery, as an academic and clinician, to medical research and professional organisations, and to the health and welfare of current and former Defence Force members. Professor Rosenfeld's distinguished career has been extraordinary. He's one of the leading clinical neurosurgeons of his time and through his cutting edge neurosurgical research has helped to improve the lives of many around the world. He's also been instrumental in improving neurosurgical care in developing nations, particularly for our near neighbours in the Pacific. Additionally, he's held senior roles in the Australian military health services area, which have required him to deploy overseas and lead and deliver treatment to those serving in international hotspots. Professor Rosenfeld, exemplifies service above self. Professor Geoffrey Rosenfeld appointed a companion of the order. Hi Jeff, good to see you. Good to see you this morning. Yeah. Uh, part of the uh, small citation read out there mentioned your work in the Pacific uh, in the, you know, with our neighbouring countries. Papua New Guinea uh, awarded you the OBE uh, for your work on their behalf and others in the region similarly are beneficiaries. Uh, you have uh, the most impressive biography. Uh, in fact, it took me three days to read it. <laughs> But I'm familiar with your work because I will say to those gathered, you were a most eminent Surgeon General of the Australian Defence Force. I've known you for very many years and I think you were one of the finest men ever to pull on a uniform coming from your wonderful medical background. Your story life outside of the military is equally important, equally impressive. Uh, your associations uh, with academic institutions. You've got standing, of course, in, at uh, Monash and, and I think Melbourne, is that correct? Yeah, I was just awarded a lifetime um, medal, a lifetime award in um, service with the American Association of Neurological Surgeons, which is their most prestigious award. May you have a long life to enjoy that. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, you've had seven operational deployments, eight. including eight now, is it? Right I was now. in Iraq. How long ago? For the Battle of oh, there you go. We, we haven't 2017, caught up now. It's not on the record. <laughs> no. uh, this gentleman uh, always responds when the military have to deploy overseas. Uh, we look to that wonderful uh, panel of health professionals in Australia. Never come up short, and the name Rosenfeld is always there. Congratulations. Thank you, sir.
appointed a companion in the general division, Professor Marie Thiessen. For eminent service to medicine, particularly to the prevention and treatment of substance use disorders, as a researcher and author, to innovative mental health policy development, to education, and as a role model for young researchers. Excellence is the hallmark of Professor Thiessen's work in the mental health field in Australia. Her rigorous and world-class research integrates disciplines in mental health and substance use, psychiatry, psychology, and clinical trials. Twinned with her exceptional research record are her equally influential policy roles, which have seen her serve as a member of a range of committees at the highest level of policy development. Professor Thiessen is also dedicated to mentoring the next generation of researchers, and her vision and drive make her one of Australia's true academic leaders, and today her nation acknowledges her. Professor Marie Thiessen, appointed a Companion of the Order. Good morning. Good morning. It's a day for statistics. Uh, you've uh, been cited over 9,000 times and you've got about 250 publications. It's, it's amazing. And it's probably concentrated around this comorbidity uh, specialisation that you've adopted. Comorbidity between mental health and uh, substance uh, use or misuse. Yep. Okay. And um, in, that, in that regard, you uh, obviously uh, have an international profile, but you're, you've had deep engagement with the Australian Academy of uh, uh, Health and <coughs> Medical Sciences mm -hmm. and, and its forerunner, whatever that was. What was mm -hmm. its forerunner? Mm, the Academy is a new Academy. Yeah. So it's um, very new to Australia and I think shows the excitement in Australian research that we can actually have a new Academy. You're an international figure and we're very proud of you as an Australian. Thank author. you very much. Mm. <laughs> Appointed a companion in the General Division, Mr Roy Thompson. For eminent service to the community through philanthropic support for a range of medical research, emergency rescue, educational, sporting and cultural organisations, and to the real estate and land development sector in Queensland. Mr Thompson is a person of exceptional character and generosity who has committed himself to improving the lives of many. He's willingly shared his skills, acumen and experience with community educational and health sector organisations. His accomplishments in the business world are also significant and he set the highest standard for philanthropic endeavours. The impact of his contributions to our society serves to inspire others to join him in giving back. Mr Thompson is truly someone who makes a difference. Mr Roy Thompson appointed a Companion of the Order. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. You built your first house in 1954. Mm. That's giving people here an idea. <laughs> and from that point, you've started to be that wonderful uh, driving engine for all. Some of these folks we've seen here with their research and their uh, study and their practice uh, they need support, they need funding. You've been funding bursaries at the, uh, the Sunshine Coast University. You've been building buildings for them at the Sunshine Coast University Hospital. And you're just now, I think, working on a, a building for the Hear and Say organisation. That's the cochlear uh, implant people. Uh, there's no end to your philanthropy. You are that most wonderful of Australians one who works hard and then gives. Well done. Thank you very much. All the best. <laughs> Appointed an officer in the General Division, the Honourable Justice Alan Blow. For distinguished service to the judi judiciary and to the law, particularly as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Tasmania, 
to legal education and professional standards and to the community. Justice Blow has distinguished himself through wise and measured management of the members and staff of the Supreme Court of Tasmania. He's an active participant in the advancement of judicial administration and education in the state, and he's also highly involved in the cultural life of the Tasmanian community. Justice Blow has impeccable judgment and is a person of huge energy and intelligence. His contribution to Australia is immense. The Honourable Justice Alan Blow appointed an Officer of the Order. Good morning, Your Honour. Good morning. Alan. Your Excellency. I'll just get a step ladder here. <laughs> well done, Thank you very much. Well, Justice Blow, uh, what's been said there is, of course, all accurate, but I just want to embellish to the point that uh, I first uh, encountered you, uh, obviously, in your role as Chief Justice, but also as Lieutenant Governor of Tasmania, in which position uh, you were. Uh, during the period when, sadly, a recent governor suffered a tragic early death and you were acting as governor and continuing as Chief Justice for a considerable time. And you did that with absolute devotion and great effect. You are much loved within Tasmania and I'm delighted that we're sending this Tasmania back, Tasmanian back with a high honour. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appointed an officer in the General Division, the Honourable Justice Victoria Bennett, for distinguished service to the judiciary and to the law, to the improvement of the family law system and child protection, to legal education, and to improving access to justice for Indigenous families. Justice Bennett is a role model for women in the law. She's helped elevate the Family Court of Australia to be a world leader in family law and she's committed to implementing the principles underlying the Hague Convention on International Child Abduction. She is acknowledged as an intellectual leader with specialised knowledge, and her work with judicial colleagues, non-government organisations and other national governments has contributed to the respect in which Australia is held. Justice Bennett's enthusiasm, her role, is most evident and she is thoroughly deserving of her nation's high recognition. The Honourable Justice Bennett appointed an Officer of the Order. Morning, Your Honour. Good morning, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before you went to the bench, you were, well, you were a magistrate, but before that barrister, then a magistrate, and then into the family court in 05. Yes. And then, uh, as I understand it, a uh, well, thing that came along very interestingly, you are the Australian liaison judge for the arrangement we have with the um, uh, International Court of Justice at The Hague. Yes. So, uh, in, in that respect, I presume you visit The Hague, but you also act to promulgate whatever the International Court is doing to the wide range of judges in Australia. Yes, yeah. and also to establish communication between Australian judges and judges in other countries who are dealing right. with families. And uh, reasonably recently you've become a presidential member of the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. Yes. Tribunal. Well, in all respects, you are just a, a, an absolute uh, uh, paladin for the, uh, for the judiciary and we're very honoured to see you awarded today. Thank you very much. Appointed a member in the military division, Commodore Michelle Miller, for exceptional performance of duty in command and the development of Navy people. Commodore Miller's leadership, in conjunction with her professionalism, tenacity and unwavering devotion to duty in all of the roles she's undertaken, has been exceptional. In particular, Commodore Miller's efforts have enhanced the management of our Navy's integrated workforce while influencing and improving workforce outcomes for Navy and the wider ADF. Commodore Michelle Miller appointed a member of the order. Good morning. Good morning, Your Excellency. Thank you. 
Uh, people here will be surprised to learn that you joined the Navy in 1988. Yes, uh, okay, but you've uh, served on four ships commanding two of them uh, and uh, you are uh, now uh, responsible for the, um, in, in one particular area, developing and maintaining a force, a workforce for the submarine force. Yes, and I think that's an enormously important endeavour and we can imagine that there are special demands and, and needs of uh, people in that uh, part of the Navy and we wish you all the very best for your continuing work. Congratulations. Thank you. Appointed a member in the military division, Colonel Douglas Mallett, for exceptional service in the field of capability development for the Australian Defence Force. Colonel Mallett has made a lasting contribution in the capability development domain, achieving outcomes that have improved the balance, cohesiveness and effectiveness of defence's ability to jointly operate with our allies. He's demonstrated superior interpersonal skills and drive in the performance of his duties. Colonel Mallett's efforts have significantly enhanced the operational capability of our nation's military and his achievements are in keeping with the finest traditions of Army. Colonel Douglas Mallett appointed a member of the Order. Good morning. Now, you, uh, you're a gunner by background in the Royal Regiment of Australian Artillery, is that right? That's correct. Okay, yeah, well, you, you went to, uh, with the British Army, uh, into former Yugoslavia uh, in 01, is that right, or 02? 02. 02. 02. 02. And what were you doing there, part of Longlook or? No, it was uh, with 1st Regiment Royal Horse, so I was embedded to the British Army as a reinforcement. It would have been a fascinating tour of duty. Definitely. Yeah. And another overseas job you've had is the Australian Defence Force Liaison Officer to the Pentagon uh, before structure. Yes. Was that before or after the job you've got now? That was before. So okay. Yeah. Well, your present job, which is actually to ensure that our political leadership uh, and the wider bureaucracy understand the nexus between a phased acquisition of, say, a family of vehicles so that there's not offsets or delays mm. that totally wreck the whole plan. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Appointed a member in the military division, Air Commodore Richard Lennon, for exceptional performance of duty in airlift capability development, strategic guidance, air mobility management and cultural reform for the Australian Defence Force. Air Commodore Lennon is a consummate professional who has displayed leadership, astute management and honed political acumen in difficult and demanding appointments. Air Commodore Lennon's devotion to duty in politically challenging and complex roles has delivered superior outcomes in airlift capability development, strategic guidance, air mobility management and cultural reform that will endure for decades to come. Air Commodore Richard Lennon appointed a member of the order. Uh, Richard, good morning, Your Excellency. Uh, you joined the Air Force about 82, is that right? Yes. Uh, you started to fly helos, That's helicopters, right. and then switched over to transport aircraft right. when the Army insidiously got the helicopters. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you first came to my attention when you led the air component uh, in the Papua New Guinea relief operation after the tsunami in 98. That's, right. That's where you got your conspicuous service cross, isn't it? That's right. Sir. Okay. Well, uh, fr from that point on, I mean, uh, you... You did things like giving the CDF advice about the ADF response to the Ebola crisis. Um, and that was very important for the welfare of our people and others. And in particular, I think you have been driving uh, a particular program recently, the, the Wedge Tail. Now, what's, now what, what's the one you're driving? Uh, we've been looking at uh, bringing in new tankers, C-17. C-17, that's it. And the, the C-27 Spartan. OK, so two types of aircraft. The the, the great big multi-engine jet, the um, uh, air-to-air refueler, and the new tactical aircraft, uh, the replacement for the Caribou. Uh, your blood's worth bottling. Well done. Thanks, sir. Thanks, All sir. the best. Thank you. Thank you. 
Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Bernard Clark, for service to naval and general marine ship design and engineering. Mr Clark has demonstrated a lifelong commitment to the service of his country. He's been instrumental in achieving successful outcomes in the delivery of high quality, defence integrated, logistical support products and services. Mr Clark is a generous Australian entrepreneur who exemplifies the best of this nation's spirit and values. Mr Bernard Clark awarded the Medal of the Order. How are you? Good. That's good. Okay. So, 22 years in the Navy. Yes. And then when you're in your civilian environment, you're a program manager for the Atama and the Orion. Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, you've, in your philanthropic area, what, tell me about Pegasus. This uh, is the writing for the disabled, is it's it? It's a Canberra organisation, even yeah. though it's across Australia, which is uh, writing for the disabled. Yeah. And uh, it, uh, these people come along and uh, enjoy the writing, and it's a good therapy for them. Got that part, and you're behind it, and... Well, well, I support it. Yes. Yeah. What about uh, Legacy? You're also involved with yes. Legacy. Yeah. Well, you are a very uh, industrious and highly uh, meritorious Australian. Well done. Thank you very much. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Dr Marjorie Cross, for service to medicine, particularly to doctors in rural areas. Dr Cross has been a stalwart of the rural community of Bungendore for over 30 years. She's made a valuable contribution to rural medicine and is committed to improving health outcomes for people in regional Australia, particularly for women. Dr Cross has been devoted to educating the next generation of doctors and has been an effective advocate for improved access to medical services. And today her nation acknowledges her. Dr Marjorie Cross awarded the medal of the order. Good morning. No, no, for medal first. <laughs> now, Dr. Cross, you are a wonderful person. We've just heard that, but there's a few other things. Tell me about the work you do with the uh, Indigenous people in the Northern Territory. I'm going to try to say the name of Kapuyak. That I can't say it, I have a sir. <laughs> Is that sort of what it's something like that? Yeah. <laughs> And several you've been going up there for a while? Uh, not recently, but several years ago, that's what I did. Okay. Mm. You've been uh, twice the, uh, by the ANU School of um, uh, Health, you've been the uh, um, Rural Teacher of the Year. Three times. Three times now? You nominated four other times. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're in there, aren't you? <laughs> Bungendore, huge practice. I mean, uh, nine doctors. And uh, you, you've also have been doing some volunteering at Captain's Flat, haven't you? Mm. Well, mm. you're that wonderful person that is a pillar of a community, a GP that works so hard. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Terence Irvine, for service to the pharmacy profession. Mr Irvine has been a key figure in the professional development of pharmacy in Australia for over 50 years. He's had a lifetime of involvement with any, many aspects of the profession and his impact on policy and operational development is significant. Mr Irvine has always been passionate about the services that pharmacies provide to ensure the health of the community and the community recognises him. Mr Terence Irvine awarded the medal of the order. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, just hang it outside the pocket. Now, the story I like about you most <laughs> is that the day after Cyclone Tracy, 1974, Christmas Day, 1974, you thought, right, uh, this place is a huge mess. You went outside your pharmacy uh, in uh, Darwin on a chair, and as passers-by came, you checked to see whether you could either give them a stock out of your pharmacy or even treat them. 
and I think that that is uh, exemplifies the sort of man you are. You've been doing relieving uh, uh, pharmacy work in four states mm -hmm. over periods so other chemists, pharmacists can uh, have a holiday. Yes. Uh, Northern Territory, Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia. Yes. And you've been doing it for years. Yes. <laughs> You're a wonderful man. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs>
we thank them. Mr John Shortus and Ms Moya Simpson both awarded the Medal of the Order. Well done. Congratulations. Now, if you just go on the angle a little, we'll yep. be able to get the photo. <laughs> well, uh, there's no performance uh, invited today, I can assure you. <laughs> uh, close your eyes and think of England. That's right. That's, uh, that was your one woman show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you've collaborated on uh, the budget. That must have been a wonderful musical, the budget. <laughs> <laughs> the singing budget. The singing budget. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was something about Howard. Oh, yes, yes, we did quite a bit about Mr. Howard. And, was, <laughs> and you write a song for every Prime Minister. Yeah, two for every Australian Prime Minister. Two? Sometimes uh, more. Oh, <laughs> I, I, well, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might want to do this one. Uh, it was neat to meet Pete. <laughs> 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 All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Awarded the medal in the general, general Division, Mr Richard White, for service to community health. Mr White has made a significant contribution to raising the issue of occupational health and safety relating to industrial pollution in the workplace. His influence has improved the national regulatory system and he's played a vital role in educating key stakeholders about the dangers of toxic dust. Mr White has also been a generous supporter of local charitable organisations and we are indebted to him for his service. Mr Richard White awarded the Medal of the Order. Good morning. Good. Now, my notes tell me that you were a, a, a long-time uh, supporter, uh, donor to the Canberra Lung Life Support Group. How, how uh, what's your membership like? Have you got a, a large number of people involved? It's a fairly small group that meets quite regularly. Yeah. Um, it also pays homage to the National yeah. Lung Foundation of Australia, which is based in Queensland. Now, there's a thing called, in 06, the White Report, and you uh, were a very strong advocate on behalf of all sufferers of lung disease, but silicosis in particular. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, OK. And the thing that really impressed me, as well as all of that, which is understandable that you would focus on such a needy area, is that you've been feeding the needy through the Freemasons in the, for the last 25 years. Correct. Well done. Well Thank done. Thank you. Awarded the medal in the military division Colonel Kirk Lloyd for meritorious performance of duty to the Australian Army in industrial relations, remuneration and employment category management. Colonel Lloyd's leadership, professional excellence and dedication to duty has contributed to ensuring that our Army's workforce is positioned to deliver future capability whilst continuing to meet current requirements. Colonel Lloyd has also been instrumental in the transformation of the Australian Army's industrial relations and employment management environments. Colonel Kirk Lloyd awarded the Medal of the Order. Skills into them. All of this is in your bailiwick. You as a king, you wearing this medal, that you're. Awarded the medal in the military division, Warrant Officer Brett Byers. 
for meritorious performance of duty in delivering innovative catering solutions and the coordination of executive events for the Royal Australian Air Force. Warrant Officer Byers demonstrated business acumen and strategic insight in resolving complex personnel issues, have delivered innovative process improvements, resulting in considerable cost savings. Additionally, Warrant Officer Byers' professionalism and skill in coordinating executive events for the Chief of Air Force has enhanced RAF's reputation, both domestically and internationally. Warrant Officer Brett Byers awarded the Medal of the Order. Morning, Brett. How are you? Good, thanks, sir. Joined Air Force in '89. Correct. Sir. And uh, I think you served in East Timor. Yes, sir. Um, and more recently, of course, you've been focused on your professional skill. Uh, you're a caterer. Uh, and one of the things I noted in your work to make the uh, VIP squadron, 34 squadron, more efficient, is you reduced ordering time. Uh, for commodities from uh, 50 minutes to 20 seconds, you've automated the yes. ordering system. That's not on the aeroplane, by the way. That's <laughs> in, behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, and that resulted in a $300,000 saving. Yes, sir. That's one professional person did that with your energy and a bit of insight. So with all your other skills, thank you for saving the Commonwealth all that money. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> thank you. Awarded the medal in the military division, Air Commodore Leon Phillips, for meritorious service in capability acquisition and sustainment for the Australian Defence Force. Air Commodore Phillips is an engineer of great skill who has deftly represented the Commonwealth's interests in major contract negotiations, whilst also securing delivery of aviation capabilities for defence and the ADF. Air Commodore Phillips has, through the mentoring and development of his staff, greatly improved capital equipment acquisition skills in the Australian Defence Force. Air Commodore Leon Phillips awarded the Medal of the Order. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So Wedgetail, that's the airborne early warning aeroplane that we have operating over in the Middle East and it's the uh, most wonderful capability there and the other air forces who, who enjoy its uh, information, uh, uh, they love it. Um, and you've also been involved and you, you, you helped deliver that by being in the United States. That's right. Yeah, yep, getting our capabilities built into the aeroplane. And then there's this new aeroplane which is the um, uh, P8. That's right. And that's a 737 chassis, but it's a maritime patrol aircraft. That's right. Billions of dollars on both those types. And you've been right in the centre of it. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Your Excellency, we turn to Distinguished Service Decorations and awarded the bar to the Distinguished Service Medal, Lieutenant Colonel David McCammon. For distinguished leadership as Commanding Officer Training Task Unit of Taji, Task Group Taji 3 in Iraq from May to December 2016. Colonel McCammon demonstrated superior leadership, planning and coordination skills to enhance the capacity of his unit. This enabled the unit to deliver training to over 9,000 Iraqi army soldiers and equip and train five brigades of the Iraqi army during a highly demanding operational period. Colonel McCammon greatly improved the combat capability of the Iraqi security forces and enhanced the reputation of the Australian Defence Force operations in Iraq. Lieutenant Colonel David McCammon awarded the Bar to the Distinguished Service Medal. Well done. It's a little strange that you get the double up on a very uh, prestigious award and it comes in a tiny little box, but uh, there we go, don't lose it. <laughs> Come around here. Uh, this gentleman and his uh, men and women trained 9,000 Iraqi soldiers, about nine brigades worth. 
of which six of those brigades, immediately they finished his training, went off and helped recapture Mosul. One of the signal accomplishments and victories for uh, the forces of Iraq against Daesh. Um, at the same time as he was doing that, he was leading this wonderfully talented group of Australians and New Zealanders. So we're very proud of him. He should be too. Well done. Thanks, sir. Awarded the Distinguished Service Medal, Lieutenant Colonel Gregory Gilbert, for distinguished leadership as Forward Observer, 12th Field Regiment, attached to Delta Company, 4th Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, in Vietnam, 21 September 1971. During operations conducted in the North Phuc Thuy Province, South Vietnam, Colonel Gilbert skillfully directed artillery fire, enabling Delta Company to successfully extricate itself from a strongly defended enemy bunker system. Under the most difficult circumstances and with great professionalism, Colonel Gilbert calmly directed the artillery fire using experience and intuition to repel a superior enemy force. His actions significantly reduced the likelihood of further casualties and brought great credit upon himself and the regiment. Lieutenant Colonel Gregory Gilbert awarded the Distinguished Service Medal. No, Greg. In the interest of full reporting, uh, he's my classmate, or I'm his <laughs> classmate today. And um, you weren't a lieutenant colonel then. What rank were you? Captain. He was a captain. Couldn't reach the company commander on the radio because of comms, they're just out. So he took on the task of protecting this force that he was uh, deployed with. Uh, over 2,000 rounds were fired. He would move the fire backwards and forwards to uh, neutralise enemy threats that were developing on the perimeter. Um, over hours and hours and hours. There's no doubt that that battle went our way because Greg Gilbert was a brave, cool, calm, professional soldier. We're very proud of him, mate. Awarded the Distinguished Service Medal, Colonel Andrew Lowe, for distinguished leadership as the Commander Task Group Taji 3 on Operation Okra from May 2016 to December 2016. Colonel Lowe ably led the combined Australian and New Zealand Task Group Taji 3, comprising training force protection, intelligence, logistic and specialist medical subunits deployed to build the capacity of Iraqi security forces. Through his leadership, the task group excelled in providing training support in a complex operational environment. Colonel Lowe's contributions have been of the highest order. Colonel Andrew Lowe awarded the Distinguished Service Medal. Hi, Andrew. Congratulations. Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, we'll do that again. Here we go. Now, uh, a bit of a, just in here, the, uh, a similar situation, but this, uh, the brigades you were preparing went into the East Mosul area, part of that battle. Uh, and in addition, there was an occasion during your time there where you recognised that some of the Iraqi army formations that needed training couldn't dis disengage from their uh, security obligations where they were based and fighting. So you developed the concept of sending out mobile teams to address their training needs. Uh, you did all of that as well as uh, I think you established a concept of support for what we'll call the North Baghdad Operations Centre, a very important Iraqi headquarters that obviously itself needed to have linkages back into this training that you were running. Uh, again, as with your predecessor, we're enormously proud of you and you've obviously got a great future. Well done. We turn to conspicuous service decorations and awarded the conspicuous service cross, Lieutenant Colonel Melanie Cobain. 
for outstanding devotion to duty as the commanding officer of the Army Personnel Support Centre in the Australian Army. Colonel Cobain has displayed outstanding commitment to duty through the delivery of payroll and administration to over 38,000 Army personnel. Colonel Cobain's initiative and innovation have ensured the successful digitisation of Army's personnel records and have provided surety to the future of Army's pay and leave processing. Lieutenant Colonel Melanie Cobain awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Hi, Mel. How are you? Good. So everybody sees you as being somewhere with an eye shade on and, you know, in a dark room somewhere doing all this. But actually you've had uh, operational service in Egypt and Iraq and Afghanistan. Yes, I have. Right. OK. Uh, there are 38,000 uh, uh, military people in Khaki who, um, whose records uh, you have to manage in a way where they get their entitlements their personal uh, issues are listed and understood and the, the transactions are visible to people all around Australia and overseas. This single SharePoint system that you incorporated was vital in that respect. So you've gone from perhaps the danger and the excitement of some of these overseas deployment into the um, crunching bureaucratic area, but I'm glad we've got a professional on the job. Thanks so much. Well done. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Colonel Scott Gills, for outstanding achievement in modernising the intelligence capabilities of the Australian Army. Colonel Gills has demonstrated exceptional understanding of intelligence related issues and superior leadership as the inaugural Director of Land Intelligence, Surveillance, Reconnaissance and Electronic Warfare at Army Headquarters. Colonel Gills has improved accountability harnessed leading edge technology and led major modernisation plans and programs. His efforts have been in the finest tradition of the nation's armed forces. Colonel Scott Gills awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Oh, Scott. Please. Joined the Army in 91? Yes, sir. And you went initially into Armoured Corps, but then changed over into Intelligence Corps. You were probably already allocated to Int, were you? Doing oh, no, sir. You, did, made a, you made the real jump, jumped into this one. Oh, right, right. Uh, one of the things that you've done, though, one of the things you've been able to do is recognise that in, in this millennium, uh, those stovepiped intelligence systems that served quite well are no good. It's got to be shared, it's got to be linked. So you have done a root and branch dismantling and reassembling of the intelligence systems of the Army and uh, where it links to other services and, and places, uh, which is invariable, uh, that those linkages are good. Scott, we're very proud of Thanks, you. Sir. Congratulations. <laughs> Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Group Captain Julie Adams for outstanding achievement in training development and delivery at number one recruit training unit, Royal Australian Air Force. Group Captain Adams is an inspirational leader whose achievements have significantly enhanced the Royal Australian Air Force's ability to deliver recruit training for permanent and reserve members. Group Captain Adams's extensive reforms in training and development and delivery have left a laugh lasting legacy that's providing ongoing benefits for the Australian Defence Force. Group Captain Julie Adams awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Now, you transferred from the Royal Air Force to the Royal Australian Air Force in 2002. That's correct, sir. And you had a tour of duty in the Middle East uh, with the RAAF. I did. And now you're in charge of that wonderful unit. I've been to your unit and uh, gave you the Governor General's banner and, and uh, was most impressed by the efficiency of it. Uh, you have reviewed that course to uh, reduce the time. And, and that's resulted in uh, youngsters 
people of all ages coming in, doing their recruit training and then emerging several weeks earlier than they might have done into the Air Force at large for their further training. And that is uh, a wonderful thing, and they thank you, of course, uh, and uh, it's made great savings. But you're a fine leader. Well done. Thank you, sir. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Flight Lieutenant Thomas Scully for outstanding achievement in advanced electronics engineering in the development of force protection systems for Australian deployed forces. Flight Lieutenant Scully is an electronics engineering expert who's been instrumental in developing and advancing force protection systems critical to ensuring the safety of ADF personnel deployed on operations. Flight Lieutenant Scully's technical mastery and solutions have advanced the RAAF's international reputation for engineering excellence. Flight Lieutenant Thomas Scully awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Well done, Tom. Thanks. Uh, so much of what you do must necessarily remain a bit of a closed shop in terms of the absolute technology, but suffice it to say uh, what this gentleman has produced is the best in the world acknowledged as such by our partner nations, therefore not only saving Australian lives, but through the brilliance of his concept and, and its production, um, saved the lives of, uh, of our partners and allies. Well done. Thanks, sir. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Group Captain Philip Trigg. For outstanding devotion to duty while deployed as Commander Air Mobility Task Group, Middle East Region, on Operation Accordion from July 2016 to January 2017. Group Captain Trigg made an outstanding contribution to the effectiveness of operations in the Middle East Region. Group Captain Trigg set the standard for cooperative airborne logistics operations and through his leadership and professionalism has enabled the Air Mobility Task Group and all deployed Australian forces to excel in their missions. Group Captain Philip Trigg awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. The job itself is uh, very busy and difficult, but when you had that changeover, you had rotten weather and you also had some unserviceability issues with some of the aeroplanes. And you had 900 people who were either trying to get in or get out. And the ones who were getting in were dead keen and they wanted to be there in time and they needed handover. And the ones trying to get out, well, they want to get home to their loved ones. And you overcame that. You performed superbly. So did your people, of course. But then, of course, you also, at the time, had to help coordinate the arrival of the New Zealand detachment. So you had a, a remarkable tour of duty, and this is an acknowledgement of it. Well done. Thanks very much, sir. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Flight Sergeant Christopher Watkins, for outstanding devotion to duty and leadership instruction and mentoring as a Divisional Senior Non-Commissioned Officer and Divisional Officer at the Australian Defence Force Academy. Flight Sergeant Watkins undertook the duties of the two challenging positions and in doing so inspired the Trainee Officer Corps by his commitment to their formative development as future leaders. Flight Sergeant Watkins' organisational and communication skills enhanced the day-to-day -day operation of the Australian Defence Force Academy and provided superior outcomes for all trainee officers. Flight Sergeant Christopher Watkins awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Good morning. Yeah. You can tell he's a drill instructor at the Academy, can't you? <laughs> Your relatively recent join, uh, 04, yes, uh, only 14 years service, uh, um, but you've had 
four operational <coughs> service trips into the Middle East area of operations. And he got posted to the academy in 2015 and immediately started to be a guide, mentor, trainer, instructor uh, to the body of cadets, training groups from 20 up to 250. And, I note, uh, stepping into officer responsibilities. I think you'd make a fine officer. Well done. Thank you very much, sir. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal, Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Nash, for meritorious achievement in the delivery of joint operational training as Commanding Officer and Chief Instructor of the Australian Defence Force Peace Operations Training Centre. Colonel Nash led the Peace Operations Training Centre with distinction to deliver high quality joint operational training through continual process improvement, broad consultation and extensive team building. Colonel Nash's leadership, knowledge and enthusiasm inspired and motivated his team and delivered a lasting contribution to the ADF. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Nash awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal. Good morning. Yeah. Now stand here and make me feel small. Um, <laughs> um, you have had operational service though in uh, Afghanistan? Yes, sir. And Iraq? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, therefore, a very credible person to put in charge of a peace centre where we're talking about how men and women can, in uniform can uh, conduct themselves in a highly moral, ethical, effective manner. You've delivered some of your peace centre training to groups from the African Union? Yes, sir. And from Myanmar? Yes, sir. Okay, and we think we could say there is a rich field for endeavour. And the, you also uh, supervise the move of the unit uh, up to Williamtown, is that correct? From Williamtown to Canberra. Oh, from Willi where are you in Canberra? Uh, at the at the campus. Okay, good place to be. All right, you can get together with the flight sergeant. Um, <laughs> but obviously, you are delivering something which Australia is seen as being a, a a great source of wisdom, and we wish you all the best with it. All the best. Your Excellency, we conclude today's investiture ceremony with a bravery decoration. And awarded the Bravery Medal is Mr Gotch Cott. In the late evening of 12 November 2015, Mr Gotch Cott restrained and disarmed a machete-wielding man in Belconnen, the Australian Capital Territory. Mr Cott was a passenger in a taxi when the vehicle was stopped by a man standing in the middle of the road. The man, armed with a machete, began to smash the bonnet of the car with the weapon. The attacker moved around the car towards the driver's door. He opened the door and began shouting and swinging the machete at the taxi driver. The offender pinned the driver in his seat and struck him with the machete. Mr Cott immediately got out of the vehicle and ran around to the driver's door. Without concern for his own safety, Mr Cott grabbed the offender's shoulder, pulled him away from the taxi, removed the machete from his grasp and attempted to subdue him. The offender verbally and physically abused Mr Cott before he was wrestled to the ground and restrained. Other people then approached the scene and assisted Mr Cott and the injured taxi driver until emergency services arrived. And today, for his actions, Mr Gotch Cott is awarded the Bravery Medal. Good morning. Now come around here, just in here. Uh, we finish on this note, and we do it deliberately uh, because it is uh, sometimes breathtaking, as today's uh, account has been. Uh, we would all, I'm sure, for a moment or two, put ourselves in Mr Cott's position, uh, going about a taxi journey uh, with other things on his mind, certainly not that there'd be violence, and this occurs we think, what would we have done? Would we have been able to do what he did? We heard those words, we can construct 
the mental image of how horrible all of that must have been. And yet you didn't hesitate. You are a very brave man and Australia is very lucky to have you. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite the Governor-General to address us. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Ngunnawal people, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present and to elders from other communities who may be with us today. This ceremony helps us all to recognise those Australians who have made an exceptional contribution to our nation. It's been my privilege to invest those being honoured and I've been able to see the pride on the faces of family and friends who are here sharing this occasion and those folks representing uh, the leadership of the nation sitting in the front. To each recipient, I offer you our deepest congratulations and our admiration and respect. This ceremony acknowledges your sacrifice and the work you've done without thought of recognition or personal gain. Australians are fortunate to benefit from your passion and your skills and dedication. And it's fitting that you've been recognised by our honours system. Honours, of course, help to define and encourage and reinforce our nation's goals and ideals. Honours help identify role models and they give the next generation something to aspire to. To the recipients, you now join the company of men and women whose actions have enriched our community and our lives. Your commitment to excellence and to your fellow citizens is something to be revered and admired. On behalf of all Australians, I thank you for your contribution. You inspire and motivate us all to do our best. I hope that all of you will remember this day as a day when your nation said thank you and well done. Congratulations. Thank you, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. May I now invite the uh, recipients at the back of the room, starting with our AO and AC, uh, recipients to please head through the hallway with our staff to assemble for an official photograph on the state entrance steps. Could I ask other guests just to remain for a couple of moments until I invite you to the reception. Thank you. <laughs> 